Jeannie Balch. Let us worship the Lord. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us say together the Gloria. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest, and peace to his God's people on earth. Lord God, God heavenly King, King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I now invite you to pray with me our new collect for revitalization. If some of you remember, um, Carla Bigham actually had the idea at our parish retreat that we should be praying together for the moving forward of our church. So this is our new collect. Let us pray. Almighty, Almighty God, God, your spirit moved over the depths and brought all creation into being. being. We, we pray, pray that, that your, your Holy Spirit, Spirit would likewise move over this parish of St. Ambrose. 
guide us as we seek to embody true hospitality, healing through community, and homecoming for all, not just within our parish, but out in the world around us. Reassure us when we doubt, and give us the courage to live in the fullness of your spirit. This we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first lesson for this morning is taken from the book of Genesis. The servant said to Laban, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, and he has become wealthy. He has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old, and he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear, saying, you shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house, to my kindred, and get a wife for my son. I came today to the spring and said, O Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will only make successful the way I am going. I am standing here by the spring of water. Let the young woman who comes out to draw to whom I shall say, please give me a little water from your jar to drink. And who will say to me, drink, and I will draw it for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out with her water jar on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew. I said to her, please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will also water your camels. So I drank, and she also watered the camels. Then I asked her, Whose daughter are you? She said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Micah bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms. Then I bowed my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord. The God of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way to obtain the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. Now then, if you will deal loyally and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so that I may turn either to the right hand or to the left. And they called Rebekah and said to her, Will you go with this man? She said, I will. So they sent away their sister Rebekah and her nurse along with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of myriads. May your offspring gain possession of the gates of their foes. Then Rebekah and her maids rose up, mounted the camels, and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebekah and went his way. Now Isaac had come from Bir Lahai Roy and was settled in the Negev. Isaac went out in the evening to walk in the field, and looking up, he saw camels coming. And Rebekah looked up, and when she saw Isaac, she slipped quickly from the camel, camel and said to the servant, Who is the man over there walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. He took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Our psalm for today is from the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verses 8 through 13. 
and we will read this in unison. The voice, voice of, of my, my beloved. beloved. Look, Look, he, he comes, comes, leaping upon the mountains, mountains bounding over, over the hills. hills. My, my beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. stag. Look, Look, there he stands behind our wall, wall gazing <laughs> in at the windows, windows looking through the lattice. lattice. My, my beloved, beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear upon the earth, the time of singing has come. And the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. The epistle for today is from the book of Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good, but in fact it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want <clears throat> is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they said, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they said, look, a glutton and a drunkard and a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I have always loved having rules to obey. Rules feel safe and easy. As a very young child, I figured out that I could earn approval and love by my obedience. So I was scrupulous at not getting in trouble. There's an old family tale about me as a toddler. Around age two, I had a fascination with the buttons on the television set. What a feeling of power and wonder to pull that little silver knob and to watch the screen fill with pictures and sound. And then in an instant, to make it all disappear. My parents, of course, didn't want me playing with the TV and turning it on and off, so they made a strict rule that I was not to touch the buttons. If I did, I got a little slap on the offending hand. So I was in a quandary. I wanted to obey my parents' rule and get their approval, but I also wanted to play with those TV buttons. The story goes that my mother would find me studying the knobs with longing as I debated between right and wrong. Invariably, I'd quickly reach out, turn the TV on and off, and then I would slap my own hand, <laughs> beating my parents to the punishment. Some might applaud my sense of compliance and my self-censure at the young age of two except that I had developed an ulcer from stress by age five. In today's New Testament readings, both Paul and Jesus point out that it's a heavy burden indeed to live according to a system of reward and punishment. It's not that the law is a bad thing. We need God's law to show us the best ways for living in right relationship with God and one another. For Paul, however, the problem with the law is that the law can identify sin but not prevent it. The law can't make us do the things that it teaches us are right. If the law shows us what we're supposed to do, yet can't make us do those things, it puts us under a terrible burden. Say there's a dying man who goes to visit the doctor. The doctor gives him a prescription for a life-saving medicine. 
for the patient to live, he needs to take that prescription to the pharmacy, get the medicine, and swallow it. The paper prescription alone doesn't have the power to heal the man. He needs the medicine itself for that. The prescription from the doctor is like God's law. The medicine, though, is loving relationship with God. Loving relationship with the God who freely pours out upon us the saving gift of life. The life that shines in the healing, saving acts of Jesus. In living a life based only on obeying certain rules, we close ourselves off to much of the full and abundant life that Jesus offers us. Often, our obedience is based on an attempt to control our relationships through controlling others and ourselves with rules. That's what I was doing in my own unhealthy, perfectionist childhood. In reality, though, the loving relationship between parent and child, like our loving relationship with God, isn't just about being obedient or following the rules. It's about a loving exchange of gifts above and beyond rules and expectations. For example, parents want us to eat healthy food, but they still take us out sometimes for huge and delicious banana splits. Paris, parents want us to go to bed on time, but they still host slumber parties for us. Like a child attempting to protect herself from the vulnerability of relationship, however, we anxiously concentrate only on obedience so that we can say to the parent and God, you must reward me because I did everything you said perfectly. Living only by the rules is a form of self-protection, like two-year-old Anne slapping her own hand. It cuts us off from any unexpected, unusual gifts of love and grace. How easy it is to become frozen, like the people that Jesus addresses in the marketplace in today's gospel, closed off from God while using rules to judge others. If we're frozen in what Paul Ricoeur calls a logic of equivalence, a tit-for-tat way of living, we have no way to cope with the wretched dilemma of our human failings. We can indeed feel as if we're yoked in slavery to desires beyond our control, bearing burdens that have become intolerable. But there is good news for all of us burdened sinners in the words of comfort that Jesus offers us at the end of today's gospel. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke, my law of unexpected grace, upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I can never hear these words about heavy burdens without thinking about what happens to me every time I travel to visit my family in Switzerland. I've traveled enough to know that it's not wise to lug around too much baggage when you're going to be moving around from place to place in Europe. In packing my bags, I usually exercise restraint in choosing clothes and other items that are light and practical. As I travel, however, temptation always gets the better of me. I'm not able to do what I know is right. I buy books and wine, and chocolates, and souvenirs galore, and just one more jar of pâté. My bags grow fatter and heavier each day until I'm in trouble. The weight of my baggage has become intolerable. Up the stairs, down the stairs, tripping on the escalator, hitting myself in the shins while pulling them, 
lifting them onto luggage racks and hoisting them on and off of trains, I begin to hate my baggage. I long to be free of it just as much as I desire to keep the treasures that are inside. The baggage becomes an unwelcome part of myself, a weight around my spirit and a literal pain in the neck. Indeed, in Romans 7:7, 7, 7, just before today's epistle begins, Paul chooses covetousness as the commandment that he continues to break as the sin that controls our actions. With all his talk of the flesh in these verses, it's easy for us in 2023 to assume that Paul is struggling with some kind of sexual sin or lust. He's not, though. For Paul, flesh doesn't just refer to our physical bodies. It refers to the powers and principalities that govern our lives in this fallen world. Systemic powers that destroy God's creatures. Powers that we would label today as corporate greed or disregard for creation or exploitation of others. The sin that's tormenting Paul is a sin of plotting to have, possess, or acquire in order to secure being and worth. How often our desire to secure being and worth leads to baggage as intolerably heavy as my suitcases in the subway. Possessions, unhealthy relationships, addictions, compulsions, enslavement to the ways of an unjust world. What heavy baggage we all drag with us up and down the stairs, baggage that we just can't let go of. Jesus stops us on the stairs and offers us another way, the way of grace and loving relationship, rest in the arms of God. If we muster the trust and courage to hand Jesus our baggage, if we can just let go of all the security and defenses that we've packed away inside, then our hands are free to hold out to one another. Our legs are free to go where we're called to go. And our hearts are free to love. We can't haul our baggage into the kingdom of God. We can't follow Jesus along the way of life if we can't even make it up the subway stairs. To be free, we must follow. Follow not just the law, but the gentle, humble way of Christ, the way of self-giving love that has no bounds. It's a risky way, not a secure one, but it's a way without ulcers or self-recrimination. Jesus' yoke of grace is light because it brings the only true freedom and the only true rest that we as human beings can ever know. As St. Augustine writes, you have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it rests in you. Amen. I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we say together the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, 
and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people follow. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. We pray especially for those in Israel and Palestine who are being af in affected by increasing deadly attacks, for those affected by deadly ethnic cleansings in northern India, for those killed and affected by 12 mass shootings in mm -hmm. July, for the ongoing war in Ukraine, for the victims, for the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. We pray especially for those affected by long COVID for economic instability, hunger, stress, depression. We suffer, pray for those worldwide who are suffering from dramatic heat waves, especially those in China, North Africa, and the Middle East. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Kim, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray especially for the birthdays of Bob Carruthers and Phoebe Lamb, for the upcoming wedding of Clara and John, we pray for those who are traveling, especially the Carruthers and Jenkins families as they travel to Albuquerque for Bob's brother's memorial. We pray for healing for Rosie, Kathleen, Jill, Jane. <clears throat> Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. And we pray especially blessings on New Zealand, being the first country in the world to have a nationwide ban on all plastic bags. Mm -hmm. We pray that you will inspire us to help us protect God's creation. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. John. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth. 
Mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess, we confess that, we that we have sinned, sinned against, against you, opposing, opposing your will in our lives. We, we have denied your goodness in each other, in, other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We, we repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, Forgive restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our, the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be all... Before we do the offertory sentence, I want to say a special prayer for Clara and John, who are getting married uh, this next weekend, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, so. <laughs> so let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God. You give abundant joy to Clara and John. Pour out your grace upon them and bring them to the day of their wedding in safety and peace. We pray in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Right, so congratulations to you. And I believe John's mom is here. So yeah, congratulations. That it be a wonderful wedding. Our, our Song of Solomon reading and our first Old Testament reading are just for you all today. So... <laughs> All right, uh, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Trusted in my God and tried to set my spirit free. Then the Son of Man he beckoned me. The Spirit of the Light came in true love. And like a gentle summer breeze, so comforting, so free, he came.
Please rise in body or spirit for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with all the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this. For the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with St. Ambrose and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever and ever. Through Christ and with Christ and in, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. You are the treasure store. You are the gift of the healer. You are my all in Our worship has ended, but our service in the world continues. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>